Hi, everybody. Welcome to my brand new podcast, Deliriously Intriguing. Now, I'm your host, Aaron Mercer. I'm a 27-year-old guy from Texas. I love music. Obviously, I love podcasts. Uh, also, game on Twitch. Um, I love sports. I love science. I love to learn. But I'm intrigued, mainly, to the point of becoming delirious because sometimes the nature of things is just too much to handle. And we can get lost in that. But that's also the beauty. So as we kick off episode one, and if you've made it this far, thank you. I want to talk about expanding the mind. Now, how can we do that? Now, there's many ways you can ask yourself, should I run off, retreat from society to find Zen? Should I go sit in a sauna for an hour? Should I do a relaxing bath or a massage at a spa? Now, my answer to all these things would be, do all of it, obviously, but there's more. And then you're like, well, is that psychedelics, maybe, or supplementation? A vitamin complex, which produces serotonin or dopamine? I mean, what are you talking about? Expanding the mind. Is it going to school? Is it, and I once again say, it's a balance. All of these things together match for immovable power, power that just can move a mountain, actually. Now, how can we achieve that? Now, I can sit in the gym, and I can throw weight, I can throw 100-pound dumbbells all day, and then I can complain about the pain the next day. Now, is that expanding my mind? Or should I be grateful for in that destruction and the repair, I'm going to come through stronger and greater? So I guess you could look at it like not succumbing to the pressure of the nature of things, which is destructive. I mean, we see that in the universe. We see that in the world all around us. When all odds are against humanity, against you, against me. I mean, everything's against us every single day. And that's expanding our mind as if we can navigate through those treacherous waters. Now, don't get me wrong. You go study textbooks for sure. 1,000%. But if you look to that being the only measure of a man, you're missing something. Now, if you're a monk and you live on a mountain and you're away from society with no human contact and that's your Zen, can you really say that you're that enlightened? You know, it's, it's the old adage. You can't run from your problems, you know. So once again, I go back to the same concept. Don't succumb to the pressure of the nature of things. Now that to me is the measure of a man. And that's why I love UFC. (laughs) Watching these warriors go at it with everything. Some come out victorious, some don't. But the measure of a man isn't if he wins or loses. But if he succumbs to the pressure. Or not. Now, speaking of UFC... We got two recent poster boy losses. That would be Michael Chandler, Cody Garbrandt. And then outside of that, in boxing news, we got some other crazy info today that Wilder is jumping in for the uh, replacement of Joshua because apparently in the contract, he was due for a third. If, If you win, I win. We go for a third for a split, and that was in the contract. They even offered the man $20 million. Just so they could go and fight, word is, and and he declined. He he wants the chance to beat Fury. I mean, it's like Brendan Schaub said, I'm not really upset about it. I mean, it's it's a crazy fight. Either way, it's a crazy fight. But do we really see Deontay Wilder beating Tyson? I just don't know. But what does this mean for Joshua? Now, back to Cody. Following his loss with uh, Rob Font, he posted a video, very emotional, obviously, a little busted up. uh, And I just want to get to that real quick because it's definitely going to tie into our concept about expanding the mind through not succumbing to the pressure. But I want to go further into that, so let's watch that real quick. What's going on, everyone? Uh, Man, Uh, first and foremost... Thank you for all the, the kind messages and uh, the support. Uh, Rob was a better man today. Um, yeah, I just felt like I was, you know, fighting myself and there, battling myself, and you know, not taking away anything away from him. Brad's having his camp, 
And I think the you know first and foremost, thank God for keeping us both safe in there. And um, you know, you know, a lot of positive to come from this. Brush it off, and um, you know, get back with my coaches and teammates. And you know, we're still striving to be the best and be the world champion. Sometimes, you know, there's adversity um, that comes along in your dreams and makes you work harder and makes you realize what needs to be done and uh, makes it that much sweeter when you're climbing up the, the mountain. So I appreciate all you guys, for real. Um, you know, uh, it wasn't my night, but, man, I, uh, I, I enjoy this, and I'll, I'll correct my mistakes. And, yeah, you know, just really thankful. I wanted to come on here and just tell you guys how much I appreciate and love your support. Um, it's very appreciated. Uh, I'm trying to fight my heart out for you guys. And uh, thank you. Okay. Definitely fighting back a lot right there. Oh, you know, I'm fighting myself in there. I mean, think about that. I'm 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 in the ring. The lights are on me. Season vet. And I'm still to that day fighting myself. That's word for word what he said. So he succumbed to the pressure that night or he just didn't show up to work. Now Cody, phenomenal athlete, phenomenal man. That dude I mean, you're talking about a poster boy of the UFC. I mean, let's be honest. But the way he talked there was like he was um, on the edge of every word. Almost as if, maybe through fighting it back so much, the emotion, um, he didn't fully believe what he was saying. I don't know. I mean, you go from having that insane knockout to you see how quickly things can change because the pressure around us so immense at times. Now, that's not a knock on Cody at all. Obviously, like I said, I mean, the dude, phenomenal athlete. Phenomenal. Insane. But the measure of a man, win or loss, is not if he wins or loses. If he succumbs to the pressure now. The question is, is Cody succumbing to that pressure now? But enough of that. Tyson, Wilder, now they must go into that challenge. Who's going to succumb? Tyson, I have full faith in the man, but is he going to come too confident? He totally outclassed Wilder. What, he won three rounds? Wilder won three rounds, but all it takes is that one shot. But now the test is for those two men. And I hope Tyson isn't looking ahead to Joshua before he's looking of what's on contract. Now, when it comes to dealing with pressure and expanding our mind, the trial of combat is obviously not the only avenue. And that's why psychedelics are just immensely becoming popularized across the globe. In my own experience, psychedelics, specifically psilocybin, um, just cured anxiety opened my mind to new horizons, broke the walls of religious dogma, political dogma, other core beliefs I had established myself without even realizing it. I mean, the subconscious is more powerful than you can imagine. And the scary thing is you don't even know you're doing it. It's called a bad habit. It's called underlying issues. It's called mental illness. I fully believe psilocybin can pure, cure things like this. Now, at the same time, you know, you don't want to go too far. Because sometimes you go too far, you go too far outside of the orbit, and you might lose orbit. <laughs> and you might end up in space. Some of us crave that. I've been there before. I've became a black hole before. It happens. <laughs> but the understanding of unity that comes the next day out of that, some would call an out-of-body experience. It expands the mind. And what greater pressure than you believe you're a black hole? <laughs> That's ultimate pressure. That's the feeling of gravity. So yes, yeah, psychedelics are great, responsibly. But the next day, what it makes me want to do is go to the gym and be healthy. This is all a machine. Now, we all might be separated by... The concept of death 
if it is a concept. And it would take psychedelics to come to an understanding of what I just said. But if we are separated by a thing we call death and consciousness is a unity thing, are psychedelics the gateway to that realm beyond you know what we what the chemical balance in our brain perceives as reality expanding the mind but going back to balance you cannot live in that because then addiction leads to imbalance even with psychedelics, even with THC, even with Kratom, even with whatever it is. So we must be vigilant. We must not succumb to the pressure and expand the mind. Now, if there's anything we learn from this, it's just expanding the mind is more than what we're... Like most people just think, oh, eat the shrooms, you're, you're going to expand your mind. And you know, that's not that's not the key because out of that state of mania, you have to come back and find equilibrium and not succumb to that pressure. Because the measure of a man isn't if you rise, fall, win or lose. But it's almost like the spirit of it all, the journey. How do you react to the journey, not the destination? I mean, we've heard this our whole life. It's the climb. <laughs> So what are you going to do today? What are you going to do next week? And beyond that. Now, I've recently been listening to new podcasts um, just throughout the day. And specifically, uh, things like Earth Ancients or um, not necessarily ancient alien stuff, but teachings of possible evidence of Anunnaki or, you know, uh, a previous advanced civilization like say Atlantis or what they would call that that maybe got flooded or is an underwater base I mean the reason I bring this up <laughs> speaking of expanding our minds let's let's go here but we've been seeing all these videos lately obviously the government's releasing declassifying videos they're claiming UFOs are here and they've been here they've been flying around um they intercept uh, jam radar from from our aircraft they surround our aircraft carriers in the ocean um one one pilot when interviewed he, he said they saw him every day for two years straight you know we know now commander david fravor accelerates and disappears like with the tic tac it's it's just the um, weirdest thing i've ever seen in my life <laughs> talk about expanding your mind all all in a short time society must uh do something i mean but first we can't even conquer ourselves and 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 going to this is a whole new realm but back to earth ancients anunnaki it, it just makes you wonder before you know we would say oh that's conspiratorial that's just bs that's none of that's real you know and we would laugh at it. oh atlantis is this disney channel um but now the own government is is just clearly saying, oh, they're here, they've been here. Well, it throws everything in the air, right? I mean, well, how do we know? Oh, well, the pyramids, how, how did they build that? Well, maybe. And we never know because Library of Alexandria was burned down. <laughs> Talk about humans not expanding their mind. That was even a time where they went back. Some say that was responsible for the following Dark Ages. So if the aliens are here, how long have they been here? Now, before we can get to the root of this, we have to expand our minds once again and get to that point in that place where all of reality is different now. And like I said, psychedelics, they can kind of help get there, but this is a new realm. Now, I was listening to a podcast and uh, a guy by the name of Tellinger was talking about stone circles and Anunnaki and a place in the Congo where they found bones, petrified bones of giants, and they believe it was a site of experimentation on ancient beings. And maybe that's why we have, you know, the, the eagle-headed statue, man statues and stuff like that, the Sphinx, etc. 
And now that the government's coming out with this, it just makes you go, oh, so maybe what they're saying isn't fairy tale, and maybe I need to expand my mind and <laughs> and change my way of thinking. But they say some of these bones would have made these giants anywhere from like eight meters tall to five hundred meters tall. Now I don't know. This is on the edge. Some would call fringe science, pseudoscience. But aliens are here. How long have they been here? Did they experiment? Where did we come from? Were we that part animal experimentation that happened in the Congo? And that's why we're closely related to chimps? Is that why? Is that why humans are the only species on the planet that is unlike any other species? Or is it all a ruse and we're overanalyzing this and we're feeding into propaganda and... Those are drones by the government, and they have technology that is just, they've kept hidden from us. Now, that's a lot of pressure. And I feel society has already dealt with enough. You got the virus, you got riots, you got racial tension, you got political, religious dogmas fighting all for control. The list goes on and on. Now, are we going to succumb to that pressure? Or are we going to expand our minds? 